All right, we're at uh, Reptile Garden. I've got a black mamba in this box. We've had a bit of problems with the snakes actually regurgitating now and, now and again. So I just want to make sure, give them some meds, um, flagell, blank panic here, just to flush out the guts if there are intestinal parasites or anything like that, and restore the flora in the gut. So we're just going to take the snake out now and just going to demonstrate how, how we do a tube feeding of a snake. And obviously you try and do it in the safest manner we can. So we just got the one black mamba here, the other one's still inside its enclosure. Okay, so obviously just been opening the lid as always. Just use it as a shield to protect myself. I've okay, got a little bit of a gaping in here. Obviously the snake is quite frightened what's happening. Okay, so just nice slow movements. The snake obviously is not in his normal environment. So it's not too defensive or anything. More looking to explore stuff. Okay. So now I just need to wait for a steady moment where I can actually pin the snake. Right. Okay, so I'm just watching the snake's body language again as usual. I just want to make sure it just wants to get away at the moment very difficult to pin now. Okay. Okay, and I just want to make sure I get right behind the jaws. Make very sure of that grip. Okay, so now we've got her. Okay, so now the thing is just to try and get it to open her mouth. Okay, luckily this tube is quite solid. So now whenever tu when you're tubing a snake, you never want to, you want to make sure you don't go down its trachea, its windpipe. Okay, so I'm just using this little tweezer so that I can work a little bit safer. And then we can just feed this tube down. Okay, it also helps often to actually use some sort of lubrication on the tube. But it seems to be going down just fine. Okay, alright, so then here goes our mix, I'm just going to slowly pump it in, I obviously added a bit of water just to, for a little bit of hydration as well, okay now the pipe is going to still hold a little bit, so I'm just going to take the end off just to get rid of all of that, yeah, but otherwise the condition of the snake very, looks very good, doesn't look dehydrated, you know, and you can never look see side this how they get the name black mamba. And then their little fangs are just underneath these little skin sheaths. There we go. So you can actually see a replacement fang there as well. So always replacing the fangs so they're nice and sharp. Okay. Alright, now for the fun part is to actually release the snake again. First thing I want to do is just make sure I've got the container ready. Well, another thing I could do is possibly carry it to the cage and release it in the cage, but we're just going to do what we call a reverse pinning method. So what I want to do is just make sure I've got the snake nicely pinned. Pick up. Okay. All right. Yeah, we don't want to actually lift it up too much because otherwise the fluid could start coming out of mouth. As you can see, even after all of that, she just wants to get away. She doesn't want to fight with me. You know, she sees me as a threat in that. And I'm very gentle with her. She doesn't feel like I'm restraining her or hurting her now. So she feels fine. She's safe. She can move, do what she needs to. Okay. Don't look at me like that. Okay, so now I just need to get her back in, but now she's in climbing mode. Come on, girl. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So. That's how it's done. Okay, we've got our second mamba here now. So 
So we're just going to be doing the same thing. Now, okay, again, so we're just going to use the lid to shield ourselves away. Okay, obviously, the Mamba feels safe inside here. He's not going to, he's not just going to come out right now. But obviously, we've got to expect the worst. Now, another way for us to actually neck the snake, which a lot more guys might use, is to actually take a pair of tongs and to just gently neck the snake there. Okay, I don't often use, use tongs, they obviously have their place, but I feel that's, you know, you strain the snake from there and they can twist and everything, and then you still have to transfer your hand to where the tongs are, in a way. So I prefer just to actually take the snakes out, handle them gently and uh, pin them when I, when I feel I can. So we're just gonna do that again, like with the last one. Okay, this guy is a little more jittery. He's not, uh, not too happy, I think he woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Okay, so just nice and slow. Yeah. Okay, so again, just watching body language and everything. We don't want him to face us at all, especially all wound up. But I mean, he's not giving me his sort of threat, which doesn't mean he can't get me at any time. But that's why I don't want to make any sudden startling movements to spook him. So you can see he's getting spooked by the hook. Okay, I'm just using this as a blocker now, because he is facing me. So just try and turn him. Yeah, so his skin is so sensitive. Okay, so I'm putting just just enough pressure just to stop him from pulling out. Don't want to hurt the snake, obviously. I love my snakes. Okay, so now again, I'm just gonna get the tube, get the fluid ready there. Okay. Okay, I can feel he's putting down on it a little bit. Okay, there we go. And then we just use this, just so that we don't get our fingers too close to the sharp end. Okay, I'm gonna double check that we're not going down the snake's windpipe. Nope. Okay. Just gently put it in. Okay, so obviously after this we're gonna leave them for a few days. And then we're gonna give them very small meals just to get them going again. And hopefully we have no problems from there. But these snakes, especially this one, I think we know that we've had it for about 12 years in total between me and a friend. And it was a full grown adult when we got it, so, but he is looking a bit skinny. So that's why we just want to make sure we can get, get him up and running again. Okay. Okay, so we just want to free up his body there. We don't ever want a black mamba wrapped around you in any way. Because once you let go of it, then he could easily come back at you. Okay. I can feel I haven't got him too nicely now, I just want him to settle a little bit. Come on. Okay. Alright. Okay, now if this doesn't show that snakes don't want to bite and kill people, I don't know what does, because obviously he did not enjoy that, it was not a nice experience. But snakes are extremely tolerant of being handled. They give you plenty of warning, so as long as you understand the um, behavior of a snake and what to watch out for and stay out of its range and not to irritate it, then it's very rare that you will be in a difficult situation. But again, each snake has got its own personality. Some are a lot quicker to bite than others. Okay, boy. Okay, so we're going to get you back in your cage now. 
just want to dip in there. Okay. Okay, so he's just going to stay down there. Doesn't want any confrontation. Cool. So hopefully we get them all sorted from there. Okay, so here we've got the mambas back in the enclosure. You can see no worse for wear. They're all quite happy. Okay, so hopefully we can get them up and running properly again and fatten them up a little more.